Okay, so here uh, again I will tell the things. To get the user inputs, we need to import the scanner library. So how we need to write that? Before the class name, we need to write import Java util dot scanner. Then here I have declared the variables name and age. So here I need to get the name. So I am writing the system dot out of printing within enter your name because I need to prompt that in the console. Then I need to get the user inputs for that. Here I have mentioned scanner and object is we need to create the object. My object is SC equal new scanner. Again, S should be capital. And within the bracket, you need to write scan, sorry, system dot in. So while I'm delivering the lecture, if you have any concerns, please uh, don't send me the messages because it's inconvenient me to see the messages. You can unmute your mics and tell me, okay? So then we need to call that particular variable name equal then the particular object dot next and bracket and semicolon. So here you need to identify uh, here as a name I declared name as a string. So that's why I am using sc dot next. In down you can see I have declared uh, age as an integer. So here sc1 it means a different object we need to use and next int. So in int I should be capital. So if you need to declare a double variable here you need to put next double but d should be capital. Okay so I think you can get the answers uh, when you are doing the practicals. So output should be like this. Enter your name after entering the name. Then it will prompt enter your age. Then here it should prompt hi name plus age. So here yeah, last week also I have mentioned we are using plus for the concatenation. And here I use the double quotation with space. Why I have used that? Because to indicate the space. If you use the within the double quotation, if you use the tab, it means slash T, then it will give the tab space. So this is the code how you need to get the user inputs. Next one, how we call the methods. Okay, so here the first method is void method. It means a non-return thing. And second one also the non-return thing, it's also the void. So here in the main method, I am calling the print welcome and the print hello as well. So object dot method name. So here you can see in print hello method, I have passed the parameter as name. So when we are calling the name in the main method, within the bracket, we need to pass the parameter which should be prompt in the console. Okay. So this is how we need to call the methods. So here in this exercise, earlier we have focused on the void type, it means the non-return type for methods. So here in this method, add function is a return type method. Okay, so return type in the sense, we need to return the value. In add function, I have used pass the two parameters, n1 and n2. Okay, so here I am getting the addition of n1 and n2. So now I need to return the value. Then I need to call it in the main method. So how I can call? 
we need to create the object and again object dot method name and you need to pass the parameter so here you can pass the parameter object dot add function and you can within the bracket you can pass 11 comma 6 okay that's also possible but here i am initializing a value in the main method then i equal to the c here then c equal object dot add function without c equal you can use object dot add function as well then within the bracket you need to pass the value so let's see what's the means of instance variable and what's the usage of instance variable so instance in the sense it's changing and just for a one instance we are using the variable here i have two variables name and salary but salary is private variable okay so i am writing the method as public white set name so i'm passing the parameter as emp name so here i can sorry equal the initial variable to this emp name it means just for an instance just for an instance i am creating a variable okay it means emp name is the instance variable so for the particular instant for particular example we can create the variables that we are calling as the instance variable and second one same as the name i am creating a method called set salary and here i am passing an instance variable emp cell so we can equal the initial salary to the emp salary i think you can get the idea so here i am printing two different methods it means name and salary okay so actually in the print details only i am prompting on the console according to this code so i am calling the methods in the main method so here i need to call the object dot set name so here the set name again i have to pass a value it's a string value so i need to use the double quotation and again for the set salary as well i am setting the salary now because if we are retrieving before the retrieving we need to set the values okay so it means we for the instance variable we need to set after that only we can retrieve it as the get so set salary it's a double value so i am putting as a thousand but uh, i am putting it as a thousand but the output should be in a, with the decimal values as well so here the third one object dot print details i didn't pass anything here so you can leave it as empty the brackets so this is the output because here output i have called name and salary so here are the print details method so here a set name and set salary is we are using for set the variables so that's the usage of instance variable so let's see what's the usage of static variable so static in the sense as the word interprets it's not changing so here i have mentioned private static double salary and second one public static string department okay so department is the variable and here i have initialized as the development okay so in main method because uh, initially i didn't initialize the value so here i have initialized the value and i am prompting the department and salary so you can see the output here it means it's not an instant it's not changing it's a static value okay so that's the difference between static variable and 
instance variable. If we are using the instance variable, initially we need to set, using the methods we need to set the variables values. Then only we can retrieve. Then only we can get the values. So these are the codes today. I need to give some idea about the Java programming practice. I will upload to this into the module as well. So next see today's lesson. So I think now you can see the presentation slides. So we are talking about the inheritance today. So simply the inheritance means we are getting the attributes and the methods from the parent class to the child class. Okay. So inheritance, double OP often to organize classes in hierarchy to avoid duplication and reduce redundancy. So inheritance in the sense here we are calling the hierarchy level. So parent and child classes. Why we are using the inheritance to avoid the duplication as well as the reduce the redundancy. So that's the main purpose using of the inheritance. Inheritance is a form of software reusability in which programmers create classes that absorb an existing class's data and behaviors and enhance them with new capabilities. It means in the inheritance, for an example, so you have taken some attributes from your parents. Okay, it means it we are taking it as an inherit. But in the programming, we are taking from the parent classes some values and some attributes, some methods, behaviors. It means behaviors in the sense of methods, but we are enhancing it with some new capabilities or else we can use it as it is. Inheritance is specific to double OP where a new class is created from an existing class. Inheritance comes from the fact that the subclass contains attributes and methods of the parent class. So initially, I think in the lecture one, we have discussed class consists of attributes and methods. So in the, from the parent class, we are taking the methods and attributes. For the methods, we, are, we can uh, tell we are getting the behaviors. Okay. So inheritance is specific to the double OP and it should create from the existing class. So the parent-child relationship between the classes can be represented in a hierarchical view that we can call it as the tree view. So I think you can remember in your Oliver science as well, you are drawing some trees to show the hierarchy. Same as here, we can draw the hierarchy as a tree. A class tree view starts a general class called superclass. So here we are calling the initial class as a superclass or base class, parent class, mother class, father class, or else ancestor class. So normally we are telling it as a superclass. And the child class, it means the derived class from the superclass, we are calling as the subclass and child class. So this is the example. So here the animal class is the parent class. And here we can give another name, ancestor. Because animal has two levels. It means animal has the main children as herbivore, carnivore, omnivore, and 
third level as rabbit, lion, hyena, man, like that. Okay, so it means animal like your grandparents. Your grandparents has your parents, then your parents, you are derived from your parents, so like that. So here the animal is the super class and we can tell it as the ancestor. And herb, herbivore, carnivore and omnivore are the, also the super class for rabbit, lion, hyena and man. Okay, so and rabbit, lion, hyena and man also the child classes for above super classes. So now let's see how we can choose the super class subclass in the programming. So normally in Java, we are using extends. So according to this, here is the herbivore. It means an animal child. So here we need to create the subclass like this, class keyword, then herbivore extends animal. So why should we need to use the extends? It means from the animal class, the subclass is extends. Okay, so that's a keyword. If we are using the extend, it means we are using the inheritance. So initially we are, when we are creating the class, initially when we are creating the class, you need to write using this extend keyword. If you are using the subclass. So let's see what are the advantages. So initially I have mentioned the two advantages we have to reduce the redundancy and to avoid the duplication. Okay, and here again mention inheritance is the ability to define new attributes and new methods for the subclass which are then applied to the inherited attributes and methods. So some students are asking uh, whether I have uploaded it to the Moodle or not. I didn't upload it to the Moodle. Uh, after the lecture only uh, I'm uploading. That's a normal procedure. Uh, so normal in the sense, if you need, I can upload before the lecture, uh, lecture as well. Uh, but I prefer after doing the lecture, I'm uploading that. Okay. If you need the other way, uh, you can inform me via the batch rate. Okay. And second one, by pulling out common variables and methods into the super classes, leaving specialized variable and methods in the subclasses. Redundancy can be reduced or eliminated. So again, the same thing, it means it can reduce the redundancy because we are using the variables and methods from the super class, but in the subclasses, we are specialized the particular variables and methods. Okay, so we are, normally we are not using the same thing as it is. Sometimes we are changing that. It means the specializing that. No need to start from the scratch when wanting to specialize an existing class. As a result, class libraries can be purchased, providing a base that can be specialized. Again, similar like the previous point, it means uh, we are specializing that. So no need to uh, again and again doing the same thing. So here you can see the example. Circle is a class and cylinder also a class. I think you have done the UML class diagram in the OAD lesson. So here this notation, this notation denotes that cylinder is a subclass and circle is the parent class or the super class. That's why this arrow is uh, prompt as like this. Okay. So in the circle, we have the attributes like radius, color, and the methods like circle, radius, double, get radius, red, uh, set radius, get color like that. So last year also I mentioned minus and plus. Okay. 
so minus in the sense the private and the plus in the sense the public okay so here we have the several methods so based on this diagram i will show the java program how we need to write the java programming using this inheritance okay Oh, I think circle class. We have done the same thing last week. So we have done the same thing last week, but now I will show the. uh again i will show the diagram so based on the last week experience and what you have learned from the last week write the java program for this circle class okay then we can move to today's part because we need the same circle class here but without looking at the last year last week notepad plus plus code in part you need to try by your own i will give the 5 minutes for that
so i think you have tried that have you tried yes or no have you completed the code have you completed the code no madam ah okay trying i will give another 5 minutes do you need more time do you need more time to complete the task yes or no
Are you sleeping? No, madam. No, in the sense, uh, you need more time or else not sleeping. Uh, we have done coding. Okay, so I will give another two or three minutes. H have you completed that? Uh, yes, yes ma'am. Okay. So here initially I need to mention in this example, so we are going to write the codings to understand the inheritance in object oriented programming so in this according to this example i am writing three classes first class circle class it's a super class and second one is the subclass cylinder class okay and i am writing a third class as as a test cylinder so test cylinder is the class which i used to call the methods it means i am using the main method in the test class okay so circle class i will show the answer same as the last week exercise same as the last week okay so according to the diagram only i have created this coding so they have asked the two private variables radius and color and i have created three constructors here one is without passing the parameters and here i am passing the one parameter and the in third constructor i am passing the two parameters okay and here i have used three methods to return the radius and second one to return the color and third one to return the area so you can refer the last week uh, last week code as well the same thing i have mentioned here actually this is the last week code okay so now what you need to do this is the cylinder class so cylinder is the subclass okay so as i mentioned before we are using cylinder class as a subclass here okay so public class cylinder extends circle so i have mentioned here if we are using the inheritance we need to use the word extends so my subclass is cylinder that's why i am using the extends then circle okay so this is the code for the cylinder class so now again i am showing the question now please try to write the coding for the cylinder class so now you can write the cylinder class
are you trying with the cylinder class yes madam so we'll see the answer now this is the cylinder class and here using the extends i have created the class and my variable height variable is private so i have declared it as the private double again here i am creating the constructors first constructor cylinder and but here i am calling as super super in the sense here i am mentioning i am taking the values and methods from the parent class okay and here height equal 1.0 in second constructor i am passing two parameters height and radius again here i am mentioning super but within the brackets i am mentioning the radius why here i am telling i am taking the radius value in this constructor from the parent class and here this dot height equal height so this dot height here height in the sense the initially height which i have declared and equal to this height in this constructor and here get height in the sense i wrote the method to return the height actually these methods have written based on the class diagram which i have shown to you then another method void method 
set height. So here again, I'm passing the height as here. And again, here I am writing this height equal height. What is this height in the sense? Initial height, which I we have declared in the cylinder class. And this, after the equal, we are putting the height, it means the parameter passing in this method. And again, here we are writing a method to get volume. So you know, to get the volume, we need to uh, get the height. Then we need to multiply by the height into the area. Okay. So then only area into height, we are getting the answer as a volume. So if I need to get the volume here, how I need to get area into height. But here we have in the circle class, we have the get area method. So directly we can get the get area method here and we can multiply by it from the height. So I think you all can understand this coding. If need, I can again explain the coding. If you need, please tell me. If you need. Can you please repeat, madam? Sorry? Can you please repeat the code? Oh, okay. So have you all have the idea about the circle class? Do yes, have? Madam. Okay. So it means the circle class. Actually, I have explained the last week, the same coding I am using here. So here in this coding, cylinder is the subclass. So I am using public as access modifier. That's according to the question. Class cylinder extends circle. It means cylinder class is extends from the circle base class. And here I have uh, taken the height as a variable according to the diagram and they are telling the variable is private. So private and the data type is double. So here I am creating the two constructors. First one, I am not passing any parameter. So in this constructor, I need to get the constructors from the circle class okay because in the circle class also we are having the constructor so i am need to get the that values to this cylinder class so that's why i am using this super keyword and super method here okay and here i am mentioning height equal to 1.0 in second constructor i am passing two parameters radius and height again in this parameter i need to get the values for i need to get the constructors from the super class so it means the circle class again i am mentioning here super but within bracket i am mentioning what's the variable or what's the thing exactly i need to get from the circle class so exactly i in this second uh, cylinder constructor I need to get the radius from the circle class so that's why I am mentioning here as the radius okay that's why I'm passing the radius and height here as well so here you can see height I have initially declared so this dot height it means it's saying the height variable which I have initially declared should equal to this height. It means uh, I am passing the parameter in the cylinder constructor. Okay. This height in the sense this dot height means this initial height equal to this particular height. Okay. And this height equal to this parameter which passing in the constructor. So again, I am writing a, another method return type to get the height. So I am writing the double method to return the height because here also we are mentioning the height and here also we are mentioning the height. But before getting, we need to set the variables. Okay, 
so i am i think in the lesson also in the theoretical session i have mentioned before retrieving the data we need to set the data i think you can remember in the instance variables okay so here i am writing a method to set the height so here i am writing the double height here then again i am mentioning this height equal it means a which is uh, previous i have declared equal to this height okay then i need to get the volume so as we all know volume can get by the height into area so already we have the area in the circle method so circle class it means our super class so we can return here get area method into height okay so that's a simple thing I, uh, can you understand it yes madam thank you okay. so now so this is the subclass initially i mentioned in this example we are writing three classes super class it means a circle class subclass it means the cylinder class and to get the method it means to call in the methods it means we are writing in the main method in the another test class okay because uh, i have used the three classes otherwise if i use in the same class so you won't able to understand it properly so this is my third class test cylinder class it means here i am only calling the methods which i have created in the previous classes so here cylinder and here i am creating the object for the first constructor which i have used in the cylinder class in the cylinder class i have used only the two constructors no so here i am prompting the radius height and get color and base area and volume okay so it means get area get color get radius all are from the circle class and here in the cylinder class we mentioned the get volume so for the second constructor within the constructor we are passing the uh, can you see the test cylinder class yes or no i can't hear properly yes madam okay uh, so here in the second constructor i am passing the two values because in the cylinder class in here cylinder class i have uh, for the second constructor sec i am passing the radius and height here okay so that's why i am passing the two values here okay so let's see the answer it means i will uh, compile the code Can you see the command prompt? No, no, madam. Oh, uh, wait. Can you see the command prompt? Thank you. 
So now can you see the answers? So here this radius and this color is according to the first constructor and these two related to the second constructor. Can you see the answers? Yes, madam. Okay. So now, up to now, we have discussed about the inheritance. Okay. So now let's see what's the meaning of method overwriting. Okay. Method overwriting and variables. So, what do you mean by overwriting? For an example, suppose that, uh, so, animal superclass, which we discuss in the inheritance. And there, we have Hyena, man, dog, lion, like that. So for all animals, behave, so there are some behaviors are similar, like eat. So me, behaviors in the sense, in the programming, we are using those behaviors as methods. So eat, eat method, we can use for man, as well as hyena, lion, and all the animals. But are we use the same same patterns for eating? Same pattern in the sense I'm not asking the same food, type of foods. The way of eating is equal or not? It's not equal because man is eating another way, the lion is eating another way, and the birds are eating the another way. But those are the subclasses for the animal class okay so method overriding in the sense when we are inheritance the methods or variables from the parent class we can inherit them but we can use according to our own way it means we can enhance those methods okay that's we are calling as the method overriding so for an example here, public class cylinder extends circle. So here in the circle, in the circle main class, we are having the uh, area method, but how we got the area radius into mat dot phi. In initially, if you can remember, in circle class, we got the area like that. But here also in the cylinder, we need to get the same thing. But cylinder and circle area is not the same equations. We need to use the different equations. So we can inherit the method as it is, but we need to modify according to our wishes. Okay, that's we are calling it as the method over writing. Okay. So the same thing here discussing. It means now can you understand the uh, method overload? So method overriding. Yes or no? Do you have any doubts? Adam, excuse me. Can you please explain it again? Okay. So I will uh, get an example like this. So animal. Suppose that animal is a super class. So in the animal class, we have the subclasses called man, lion, rabbit, and tortoise. So for all animals, we have the one similar behavior called eat as a method. Okay, So all animals should eat, but the eating patterns is different. We are using the several eating patterns. Man is eating another way, using the hands and the tortoise eating another way. 
But when we are writing the methods, we can inherit the eat method from the animal class. After inheritance, we can modify that method in the subclass. That we are, it means according to our wish. That we are calling as the method over writing. It means we are getting it and we are uh, modifying according to our wish. So in this example, in the circle superclass, if you can remember, we have taken method as get area. But there we have used math.pi into radius. Okay. Radius, sorry, radius into radius into math.pi. Okay. But here, when we consider for the cylinder, we can't choose the similar equation. Cylinder area and circle also we are getting the area. We can use the get area method. We can get, inherit the get area method from the circle class, but we cannot use the same equation. Can you understand that concept? It means the cylinder, equa cylinder area equation is different from the circle area according to the maths. So we cannot use the same equation. Okay. So here, that's why I am taking the get area method from the cylinder class, but here I have uh, done some modifications. So simply the method overriding in the sense we can inherit the methods from the parent class to the subclass and we can enhance it according to our wish. Now, can you understand? Yes, madam. Thank you. Okay. So now let's, we have up to now, we have considered about the inheritance and method over writing. Next week, we will discuss about the method over loading. Okay. But before that, we need to uh, talk about another concept called composition. I think in double OD also, you have heard that word. So two ways of reusing existing classes. So we can reuse the existing classes based on these two techniques. What's that? Inheritance, we have already discussed. Second one, composition. Okay, so we'll see what's the meaning of composition. So composition in the sense, from the word we can interpret, it consists of, compressed with something. It means the contain something. In composition design model objects that contain the other objects. So for an example, if we consider car, car has engine, has tire, and we have the several things that we are calling as a composition. So in the composition, the difference between the composition and the inheritance in the sense, in composition, we define new class which composed of existing class. But inheritance, we are not defining, we are deriving new class based on the parents class. But we can do some modifications. So this is the example. So for an example, if you think about the line, drawing line, if you think about the line, so how we can uh, draw the line for the line? We have the two points. Okay, line has the two points. So in from this phrase, you can identify when we are uh, telling about the composition, we are telling we have the has a word. Okay, we are telling us, we are telling the uh, car has an engine, car has a tire like that. If Something is composing with some objects. We are telling it as a has a relationship. So, if you are, if you need to identify the relation composition relationship, then we can identify from the has a relationship. Okay. So here, in this one, in this diagram, you can see point class and line class. 
we need x and y points so it means we need two points to draw the line so you can see the notation as well the composition notation okay that's denote the composition notation you can further learn from the double o d lesson so again the same thing they are telling the a line has also be implemented using inheritance from the point class and the point class also so here we are showing the composition but this line and point we can use as the inheritance as well okay so this i am showing point and line as composition but using same two classes you can write the inheritance as well okay so you have homework now what's the homework you need to write the three classes first one point second one line it means super class point uh, sub class line and third class test line or something to show the inheritance not the composition no need to write the coding for the composition try to show the inheritance as the homework got it or not yes ma'am okay so it means like this so this this diagram you can use to uh, write the coding inheritance coding it's a simply showing the all the attributes and behaviors so based on this you need to write the coding okay so to for the today that's all do you have any questions what we have discussed up to now today lesson inheritance method over writing composition but the important thing is method over writing and another important thing inheritance Okay, so as a homework, you need to write the coding for this diagram. Okay. Have you all understood? Have you all understood? Yes. Got it or not? Yes, madam. I can hear only one or two voices, but all the participants, two hundred and seventy-seven participants are there, but answering only two or three students. Why is that? If you can, if you cannot understand properly, tell me, madam. We can't understand. Okay, because this is not the physical class. No, so if I am doing the physical class, I can understand from your facial expression whether you can understand or not. But here, I cannot understand whether you are muting the video and mute the mic microphone, and may sometimes you may eat food, sometimes you may sleep. Okay, I don't know because uh, to we are getting the attendance for that purpose. I don't know whether you are uh, having this session. So please tell me whether you have understood this lesson or not. Are you sleeping? No, madam. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, you all got the today's lesson? Yes, madam. Okay. So I will wind up the session. Please do the homework part.